I want to show you how to find out more uh, about SiteGrinder 3.5. The best place to start is that in the getting started section of our documentation wiki we have uh, a page called version 3.5 information. It summarizes all the new features and links directly to the changes to the documentation that cover those features. Uh, sometimes those changes are entire new pages and sometimes they're sections of existing pages depending on the content that it's talking about. But I highly recommend bookmarking this version 3.5 information page. Um, there's also uh, the new features list here, which just gives you a nice overview of the new features. And there's now a SiteGrinder 3.5 sample files and sites page that we'll be uh, adding to continuously over the next few weeks. And uh, it already has a, a, a lot of very helpful files on it. Uh, the SiteGrinder 3 TV page has now a SiteGrinder 3.5 section, which currently has three videos on it, including the accordion tutorial that I just mentioned. So those are kind of your primary sources for uh, information on the new SiteGrinder 3.5 features. Now, uh, one of the things, I'm going to move on from the accordion uh, right now because I want to get to a lot of the other features, but uh, one of the things you'll notice, um, if you download this sample file, there are some cool individual things to look at. So for example, uh, if I hide, oh, oh, I do want to point out one other very, very important thing about the, the accordions though. When you build your uh, file that has an accordion in it, you do want all of the layers to be visible. Uh, so you want uh, all of the layers on all the tabs to be visible. You might hide them in order to edit one tab or another, um, but you you need to re-show them and update your layer comp before you build in order to have everything included properly in the accordion. So notice that we have this uh, form here in, in this accordion panel, and uh, I've actually copied this into another file uh, and altered it a little bit because I want to show you uh, the way this form uses another new feature of 3.5 which is the ability to create a custom image button for uh, to use with forms as the submit button. Now in uh, SiteGrinder 3, uh, before SiteGrinder 3.5, to create a submit button for a form you simply take a word and put it in parentheses and SiteGrinder knows that that's the submit button and it uses the text that you put between the parentheses as the text of the submit button. And that works quite well, but it's not ideal from a design standpoint because as you probably know, every browser draws its submit button a slightly different way, just one of the wonderful wonderfulnesses of working on the internet. And if you want to have a consistent look for a form, uh, especially, if, especially if you're doing a really fun, really nice looking form as, as you can finally do now with all of the CSS settings that SiteGrinder makes available and, and that sort of thing, uh, it's, it's usually nice to have an image button. So we added this feature to SiteGrinder 3.5 and this is how it works. You basically make an image button just like you do normally in uh, SiteGrinder by just creating an image layer or a group with uh, image and text layers mixed together. And you add both the button hint and the form hint and you name it after the form. So because this form layer is called projects form, its custom submit button will be called projects form button. You can uh, have an optional rollover layer and an optional click layer, uh, I mean a hover layer, sorry, and uh, those uh, also need to be named after the form but they don't require the form hint. So projects hover will be the hover state for projects form button. Now in terms of positioning, notice that this button is way over to the side from where the form actually is. And uh, this is really just to show you how it works. SiteGrinder does not respect the position of your form button in your document. Uh, unlike most things, uh, SiteGrinder will actually grab that image button and stick it where it needs to go in the form for you. So in this case, this is using a feature that, that, that a lot of people probably didn't even know SiteGrinder had, which is that your submit button does not have to be at the end of the form. It can be inserted in the middle of the form. Now that's not great consistent web UI, but I'm just sort of showing off that you can actually do that. So when we build this, SiteGrinder is actually going to grab this image button and its hover state if there is one, etc click state and stick it between the email uh, slot and this how did you hear about us menu. So let's go to the browser quickly and just see how SiteGrinder did with that. Okay so here's our actual built form and notice that uh, it does in fact roll over 
and so it's inserted right in the middle of the form where we had it. So that's how the form button feature works. Next I'd like to move on to the new click stay feature. And uh, this one's really cool. I, I, I'm not sure everyone's going to end up needing it, but when you need it, you really need it. And uh, we were inspired to create this feature uh, by a customer who was creating a website for a company that sells coverings that you put on oil wells. And uh, they're the sort of, uh, those kind of seesaw oil wells that you'll see in uh, Colorado and, and around the West. Uh, and they had, they, you could turn one into a cow, for example, and they, and they had a head that you could put on one part of the, of the oil well. And uh, they had uh, a sort of a body and you could mix and match. And what they wanted to do was use SiteGrinder features to allow their customers to kind of preview what one kind of head would look like and a different kind of body. Uh, and unfortunately, the, the uh, way that you would have been able to do this uh, in a previous version of SiteGrinder would have required custom JavaScript because SiteGrinder did not allow multiple sets of things to operate independently of one another. The, uh, the hover and, sh and uh, uh, the hover show feature of SiteGrinder is sort of global so that when something else appears, if something is shown in a hover show, it will necessarily disappear. What we've done with the click stay hint is we've made it so that things that are made visible by a button can stick around even if something else is made visible by a different button. But that you can still have subgroups of these things that uh, actually will hide each other as they're hidden and shown. So what I'm going to do is quickly show you how this actually works in the browser. So what I've done here, uh, mostly because I needed some public domain uh, art, was I used uh, a series of mugshots uh, of Lindsay Lohan. She's, she's very popular uh, uh, with mugshot photographers. And uh, luckily, we all helped pay for her mugshot, so we own it. And uh, so that meant, mean, means that we have some nice uh, public domain art here. And notice that as I choose uh, the different images, uh, they change here. And this is a menu here that I'm using to choose from among the different images. Then I also have these quotes. And uh, I'm not sure if these were actual quotes from the arrest incident or, or not. But, but these quotes are triggered by these image buttons here. So there are a couple of things to notice here. First of all, I'm able to switch out the quotes without anything happening over here to the image. And I'm able to switch out the image without anything happening to the quotes. So you could equally well imagine that this was a sort of uh, uh, paper doll kind of situation where maybe you're showing a t-shirt with one set of buttons, maybe a, a t-shirt color, and maybe a t-shirt logo with a different set of buttons. And they can operate independently of one another. So it's actually quite powerful and much more useful than, than simply making fun of dissolute celebrities. So what we'll do here is show how this works. So I want you to notice that we basically have two collections of things. One is a collection of type layers that create these quotes and the other are these images, the, the mugshot images. And so what we're going to do is switch back to Photoshop and see exactly how this works. So what I want you to notice here first are these layers right here. So these are all of our mugshots. And I want you to notice that they all have the click stay hint, which means some button is going to control their visibility. And then uh, this is the tricky part that makes this all work. In order to, to collect these all together as a group that will, uh, m if, if one is made visible, will cause any other one that's already visible to be hidden, but not anything else on the page, just, just another image that's in this group, we begin their names with the same text. So notice they're all starting with the words mugshot, and then they have different dates afterwards. Because they all begin with the word mugshot, then the click stay system knows, okay, these are all part of one unique set of things, only one of which can be visible at a time. So if any button makes any one of these visible and another one is already visible, that one will be hidden and the new one will be made visible. The same is true for these captions. The captions here all start with the word cap. 
And again, it could be, I just picked that when I created this document, but I could have used the word caption. I just wanted to make the name a little shorter, but in that case, they all would have been named caption. And then I'll show you how the buttons actually connect to them. Notice, just as with any other SiteGrinder button, if this were a hover show or something like that, we name our buttons after the things that we want them to make visible. So in this case, these five buttons up here are these image buttons, and they're all named after the uh, the captions that they are connected with. So cap bubble will make uh, this one visible. Cap freaky will make this one visible. Cap party will make this one visible. And when one is made visible, if there's another one that's already visible that starts with the word cap, uh, it will be made invisible. So basically, we have multiple independent groups of things that sort of automatically manage their visibility. And even more convenient than making individual buttons is here, I just made a menu and I named every menu item after one of the mugshots. And so that actually means that, that as with most things in SiteGrinder, menu items that uh, use special text, in other words, text that matches to, let's say, a hover shoe layer, or in this case, a click stay layer, act the same as a button that's named after that, that same thing. So this is just to show you that essentially menu items have the same functionality uh, as buttons in terms of connecting the name of the thing that's being shown to the name of the thing that's being clicked. Uh, again, this file is available for download and perusal as well as the built, uh, the, the built uh, page here. And uh, these are documented in the mouse interactivity um, wiki page and you can find uh, a link directly to the new documentation for it from that SiteGrinder 3.5 information page that I talked about earlier.